Hi everyone, Dr. Donovan here. Just wanted to share some good news and some less than good news. The good news is that our paper, Minoxidil Toxicosis in Cats and Dogs, a scoping review and call to action, has been published in the Journal of the American Academy of Dermatology. This was a collaborative effort of 14 dermatologists and veterinarian specialists, led by first author Dr. Eric McMullen, another wonderful first author paper by Dr. McMullen, which contributes so significantly to the hair loss literature. The less than good news is the toxicity of minoxidil in our pets. We reviewed the previously published literature and found cases of minoxidil toxicosis in 26 dogs and 68 cats. What's so important is just how sick pets can become. Pets can become sick within 30 minutes of exposure to minoxidil. In the meantime, the average time in this study was around eight hours. And minoxidil can affect the heart and the lungs and the liver and the kidneys. Pets can become so sick. 98% of pets were hospitalized after being exposed to minoxidil with toxic effects. 15% of cats died. Pets become exposed differently. Dogs become exposed by curious type behavior, rummaging through trash, finding a tissue that's coated with minoxidil. Cats become exposed by licking the skin of an owner or licking bedding that's been contaminated with minoxidil, perhaps with minoxidil rubbing off on a pillow. What's so important, and the reason that we wanted to put this review together, is to let both the dermatology community, the medical community, and the public better appreciate that even a single lick of minoxidil can lead to pets becoming so sick. Pets lack an enzyme which processes minoxidil. We as humans have that, and that's why these toxic effects of minoxidil don't occur in humans, but they can occur in pets. A single lick of minoxidil can be toxic to pets. And so a cat that licks a pillow with minoxidil needs to get to the veterinarian specialist right away. There's a couple of points that we really hope that this article conveys. We hope that people can better appreciate that we have to take better care of how we dispose of any minoxidil contaminated products. A tissue with minoxidil has to be put in the right place, in the right trash, and limiting the exposure to a pet. People that have pets may think twice about letting the pet sleep on the bed, especially if there's any possibility that there's going to be exposure to minoxidil, exposure to a, a scalp that has minoxidil, exposure to bedding that has minoxidil. That can lead to pets becoming very, very sick. Perhaps another type of hair loss treatment or another mechanism of delivering the minoxidil, like oral minoxidil, might be discussed with the healthcare provider in that particular situation. Even the smallest amounts of minoxidil can lead pets becoming quite sick. Minoxidil is widely used for hair loss. It's FDA approved for androgenetic hair loss in men and women, but it's used off-label for a number of other hair loss treatments. Head ownership in many countries is very prevalent. In North America, 60 to 70 percent of households have a pet. When you take pet prevalent ownership with the commonality of using minoxidil for hair loss and you bring those together, you realize there's going to be a lot of pets with potential exposure to minoxidil. We need to do better. And one of the most important parts of the title is the last three words, call to action. We really hope this paper raises awareness within the medical community as well as the public about the toxic effects of minoxidil. But moreover, we really feel we need to do better. We hope that this paper brings together the medical community, the veterinarian community, the regulatory communities, to better convey information to the public about the toxic effects of minoxidil. When you look at product monographs, when you look at textbooks, when you look at writings about minoxidil for hair loss, they contain all the important information about how to apply it, the potential effects on humans of shedding and hair on the face and rare dizziness in human beings, but they don't contain information about pet toxicity. Pets are so much a part of our lives that this is essential that we include this. So we welcome your comments, and we welcome your thoughts about ways in your country and ways around the world that we can do better, because we feel we need to do better to protect our pets.